Do you know that it takes literally as much energy to remain in overwhelm as it does to get organized? You start replacing and filling that thinking loop with the world has shifted, I'm shifting too. Pivoting is what makes people. One of the biggest differences that I made that allowed me to create the results that I'm really proud of is designing my day with intention. Want to be happy? Build a life, not just a business. Living that believe in life. Out here living that believe in life. Every day we living that believe in life. Hustle like we living that believe in life. Living life, yeah, so we grinding it out. Every single day we be grinding it out. Hustle like we living that believe in life. Oh, that believe in life. Oh. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and this channel was created to help you overcome the number one challenge that is holding you back a lack of belief in yourself. You watch these videos because you know you've got something more inside you. You've got Michael Jordan level genius at something. So today let's live your best belief life and learn the seven habits that will make you 1% better every day. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with habit number one. Manage your time better with Lisa Nichols. How to manage your time to get done what you need to get done to build your dream, to have family time, to breathe, to really live a 360 life. You know, time management for me was something that I didn't even know I was horrible at at one time. See, I'm a creator, I'm a dreamer, I'm a butterfly. And what that means is I can be chaotic and sporadic and I can go in one direction in one minute and then another direction another minute. That I, there, there, been, there were times early in my career, Jelani was about five years old at the time, he's now in his mid twenties, and I could work for 10 hours a day and literally have a list of 10 things to do and only have checked two of those tasks off. But I really, really worked 10 hours in the day. And I remember for years I wondered, what is it that I'm doing wrong? What is it that I'm not doing? Why do I feel overwhelmed? Why do I constantly feel as if I don't have enough time? Do you know that it takes literally as much energy to remain in overwhelm as it does to get organized and manage your time? I know that sounds crazy. I didn't believe it when I first heard it. But actually, overwhelm is an unconscious, say unconscious, overwhelm is an unconscious strategy. Say unconscious strategy. Yes, I know. It stings. It's not nice to hear. <laughs> I didn't want to hear it. I resisted it when I first heard it. And yet the truth is that it actually does take as much energy to keep making up the plan versus making a plan and staying in it. Now, my belief system around time management was that time management was going to restrict my creativity. Time management was going to make me feel as if I'm boxed in, I'm blocked in, I'm limited. Time management was going to take away my freedom. Man, I had a long list of the things that I considered time management to do and how many ways it would damage who I am. <laughs> and the truth is, it took me a while. It really took me a while to really become committed to time management. But what got me committed to time management was I knew that I was operating at 60% of my possibility, 60% of my potential. And I wanted to use every tool I had to find my 100. I am here to tell you that if you feel overwhelmed, if you feel like there's chaos around you, if you feel um, like you're underproducing, if you feel like you're being pulled in a thousand different directions, heck, even 500, I'm gonna invite you to step into time management because it will eliminate that. Time management, the proper, the proper time management gives you grace and ease, gives you time. It allows you to get more, yes, I said more, more done in a day and have greater peace of mind while you're doing it. You actually can get more done in a shorter period of time. If I had not done it myself, I would not believe what I'm saying right now. But I'm here to tell you, you effectively implement time management you will actually have more freedom, more structure, more peace of mind, more joy. And get this, 
it'll feel as if you have more time. Habit number two, shift your thoughts with Dean Graziosi. I want you to be the observer, thank you. I want to be, you to be the observer of your thinking loop and how that's spinning out your focus. And then you can shift it. Start thinking, you know, the world has shifted. I have new opportunities, I have new capabilities, I'm alive, I've navigated the world, I have family, friends, husband, wife, kids. Like, shift that up. I am resilient, I am resourceful, I am magnificent, I am powerful, I get things done, I solve problems. You start replacing and filling that thinking loop with the world has shifted, I'm shifting too. Pivoting is what makes people, right? Like, remember, like, they don't make statues of critics, they make statues of the dreamers, the crazy ones, just like me. I'm going for that. And all of a sudden, if you're consciously aware, I'm, if you're consciously aware of that thinking loop and you throw out all the crap of lack and you start putting in what you could do, then I'm gonna take uncomfortable action. I'm gonna be an innovator. I'm gonna get out of my own head. I'm gonna take action. Like you start changing it, all of a sudden you go from the guy that's yelling at the clerk because they messed up on your change to ah, don't worry about it, have a good day. And when you think about that, have a good day, I can accomplish anything, guess what? Here's the crazy part. You can. You can. I have no reason to be here. I didn't go past high school. I had dyslexia. I didn't start with money. Everybody thought, I would probably the least likely, anybody in my school would say I'd be successful. And in the knowledge industry, who the hell would think this guy, me, who barely could read in seventh grade, that I'd be a multiple New York Times bestselling author, teach people around the world, one of the top trainers there are on the planet. How would that happen? By some of the same exact stuff I'm sharing with you right now. You gotta watch your thinking loop. You gotta watch your focus. And then you gotta get crystal clear clarity. So what's up, man? It's good to see you. I, I see you all over the place. I see you hustling. I see you try impacting lives, doing amazing stuff on YouTube. I wanna share whatever works for, you know, your following, my following today. But I wanna share, dude, your book, Built to Serve. You are built to serve. There's a difference when, you know, this is, I've been an entrepreneur for, entrepreneur for over 30 years. I've been in the self-education industry for 24. It's, can't even seem, doesn't even seem possible. But there's a lot of people that when you kind of meet your heroes or you meet the people behind the book, a habits book, a built to serve book, a time management, it's like you, beat, you meet the guy with the time management book and he's late getting on stage and stressed out of his mind in the green room. Like there's no congruency is what I wanted to say. And before we chat today, I just want to honor you and, and give you congruency. This what you wrote in this book is really who you are, man. You are built to serve. You reach out to my team all the time and want to help with YouTube and tell us what we're doing wrong. And it's not, you're not doing it because of finances. You're not doing it because you're trying to get an edge. You're doing it just because this is who you are, man. So I love seeing you out there. I love seeing you grow. I love seeing the impact you're making. Cool, man. Appreciate it. I'm, I'm still working on accepting compliments. So, um, I'll just say thank you. Oh, then I'm going to keep doing it through this entire thing to make you feel uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, great. Classic Dean. All right, cool. Well, you know, I also in that story, um, you know, you've been really helpful in getting that book out. I remember when I came to Puerto Rico and uh, was trying to get feedback on pre-launch, you and Brendan Burchard took time backstage while you're doing your big event. And people paid all this money to come there and you took time over lunch for 40 minutes to do a deep dive on my strategy um, and just super grateful that you guys did that. And you hooked me up with your warehouse and, you know, a whole bunch of things that Dean, Dean's a big reason why the book is, has, uh, uh no, got just, there just a well. little piece, man. Just what's up, everybody. I see the highs. So listen, um, appreciate everybody. I see all the cool comments coming in. So how can we deliver some value today? How, how do we help out? Besides, um, I, I do got to plug this. Like if you didn't check out, uh, Evan's built to serve. You should check it out. Um, the truth is I'm not all the way done. I freaking love it. My biggest problem is every book I read, Evan, I listen. I, I, I have such a hard time reading. I still have dyslexia. It still doesn't stick. So it's taking me longer. But when I actually read a book, it sticks. So I uh, highly recommend it. And uh, it's it just you. It's like it's it's having a, a 200 page conversation with you, which is which is always cool. Cool, man. Appreciate it. Well, we also, I also have an audiobook version. I, I read it myself, so there's always... Oh, dude, audience. please send that to me. Habit number three, design your day with Marie Forleo. Take a look at rather than designing realistic goals is how can you design the most inspiring schedule for your day 
and your week so that you're optimizing who you are and what you can contribute to this world. And I can tell you that one of the biggest differences that I made that allowed me to create the results that I'm really proud of is designing my day with intention and being really, really clear about when I'm going to bed and when I'm waking up. You know, computers are made to run nonstop, right? We can turn them on, we can hammer away all day with not taking a break, and pretty much they're gonna keep running day after day because they're a machine. But we humans are built differently. And if we don't architect our day in the right way, if we don't build in rest, exercise, hydration, give ourselves free open space, white space, just to dream or to think or to play, mm -hmm. We are going to put ourselves in that position where burnout is a real thing, and then it's going to put us so far back that it's going to take 10 times more to even just get back to base zero, nevertheless reaching our biggest dreams. How about number four? Meditate with Kobe Bryant. I meditate every day. I meditate every day, and um, I do it in the mornings, and uh, I do it for about 10 to 15 minutes. And uh, I, I think it's important because it just it, it, it sets me up for the rest of the day. You know, it helps me. It's like it's like it's like having an anchor. You know, it's it's um, if I don't do it, I feel like I'm constantly chasing the day, as opposed to being able to be controlled and dictate the day. Not that you're, you know, calling the shots on what comes forward, but the fact that I am set and ready for whatever may come my way. You know, I have a calmness about whatever comes my way and a poise. Um, and that comes from starting the morning off with meditation. For me, it's really just, just listening to, to my inner self. I mean, there, there's, that's basically it. Like you, you sit in silence and you just allow these thoughts to come forward and you get a chance to observe um, the self and, and, and things that may be lying beneath the surface that if you don't have that time to sit quietly on your own, you'll never pay attention to. Because you know, if you think about it, like you know, the reality is we're paying attention to so many things that are going on around us. We're constantly taking selfies, we're constantly taking pictures to post on Instagram and all these other things, and we're constantly observing everything that's around us, but we don't take the time to really observe what's going on inside of ourselves. And uh, that's what meditation is for me. Habit number five, change your environment with Ed Milet. I had read all the books on personal development, I learned about influence, Kind of learned how to change my state, how to think differently. Been to a lot of the events that you go to. Why is it that so many people go to all these self-improvement, personal development, business events? They get all excited when they're there, they're ready to conquer the world. Then they get back home and life very slowly starts to drift back to normal. And that's because environment overrides almost everything in our lives. That's why. And so the reason you're so excited when you're at the event, the reason you're ready to conquer the world is the environment supports what you're doing. And so. I had to start to address my environment. And environment is all the place you are, but most importantly, your environment is the people that are around you. Because write this down, number one, in our lives, the most powerful force that I'm aware of in the world is to be consistent and congruent with the expectations of our peer group. Let me say that to you again. The most powerful force on earth is we become consistent with the expectations of our peer group. You're gonna get out of life what the people around you expect of you. And so I had to begin to address who were the people around me, and specifically, what was the environment that I was in? Because number two, proximity is power. The closer somebody is to you, the more influence they have over you. That's why your personal relationship that you're in is something that must be evaluated at all given times. And people ask me, how do I get more spouse support or partner support, boyfriend or girlfriend support? I don't know that you're always gonna get more support, and I don't even know that that's needed. But one thing that's a foundation of all relationships is does this person believe in me? Most people love us. That's one thing. If we're in a relationship, we kind of feel a level of love. But the deeper question is, do they truly believe in me? And when I started to evaluate my friends that were around me, if I asked myself, were they supporting where I wanted to go in my life? Not that they didn't love me or like me. In fact, what most of us do is we love to have people around us who accept us. We say, I want people to accept me as I am. And there's a benefit to that. There's a huge negative as well. If people are constantly accepting this version of you, there's there's nothing compelling you to go to the next version. There's no stimulus that says I better change. There's no discomfort. Because these people closest to us, their proximity has influence over us. So number one thing I want you to ask yourself is do the people around me believe in me? And if they don't, that needs to be evaluated. People say, well then what do I do? Do I get rid of them? Well maybe, in some cases. I mean if they're antagonistic to you, certainly. 
But what you have to do is begin to add people in your proximity who do believe in you or who will believe in you. And if they don't believe in you, perhaps they don't need to be eliminated from your life, but one thing you may need to do is start to reduce their proximity to you. Maybe they're not as close to you as they used to be. I've had to do that many times in my life where I've had to eliminate a few people from my life, but very few. This is so critical to you becoming successful because your environmental game is more important even than your mental game because it's what supports it. And so I want you to evaluate a few things. Do they believe in me? Number two, are they a past or future reference type friend? In other words, when you're around them, what do you find yourself talking the most about? Is it the past or the future? I wanna be around people who are constantly talking about either the present, but most importantly, the future. In other words, I want people who are present with me so that when they're with me, we're together. You know you have those friends too who are constantly not present even though they're in your presence. We don't want that either. But if people are constantly taking me in the past frame of reference, old stories, old things, remember when, high school, college, previous date, previous vacation, previous business, remember when, constantly, you know, they're just always reminiscing. Or are they projecting me into the future? If at least 75% of your conversations aren't about the future with the people that you're around, these are not people supporting your future, they're supporting your past. They're reinforcing your past. The more we talk about something, the more we reinforce its importance in our life. And so this is a very subtle thing, and I think even as I say it, you're going, whoa, they do love me. I think they might believe in me, but man, we talk about the past all the time. Well, this is somebody who's gonna reinforce that state of your life. You need to add people to your proximity who are discussing the future with you. Habit number six, push through with Tony Robbins. Challenges are what really grow us. You know, your life is a great story. You know, every person's life is a story. And the question is, some people's story is a warning, some people's story is an example. Right now, you're an example that's growing and expanding, and you have a chance to have this be the most incredible life. But it won't be a life without challenge. And the challenges we're facing right now give you an opportunity to grow like very few generations. You know, I'm sure you've heard of the great generation, the World War II generation. If you watch a great movie, if you read a great book, you know, the size and the power of the hero, how much you become as a hero is defined by how tough an obstacle you face, how difficult is the villain, the opponent. And so sometimes when I've been through the toughest times of my life, one of the questions I've had to ask myself or note to myself is, ah, I finally have a really worthy opponent. This is scaring the hell out of me, or this is challenging me, or this is making me crazy. But I also know in my gut and my soul that if I can push through this, just like you've done in these years, you've pushed through tough times, I'm sure, many of them. But as you push through those, you become more. And as you become more, something magical happens. You don't just grow. You expand in your spirit and your soul and your capacity and your skill. And all of a sudden, fear becomes less and less a part of you. And habit number seven, the last one before a very special bonus clip is live without regrets with Jay Shetty. The truth is that we can all at any stage in our life create a life of no regrets. There's no limits. There's no impossibilities. There's no stopping point. There's not a point where from that point onwards, you don't have a chance. You always, always, always have a chance. Regret has some really important roles. The first one is that it helps us make sense of the world from our perspective for one of the first times. See, most of us have spent our lives learning what's important to us based on maybe what family thought, what communities thought, what parents thought, what education thought, whatever it is. When you start regretting something, when you think you did something wrong, when you start thinking that I could have done something differently, you're making sense of the world from your perspective. It's, it's crazy how powerful this is, right? You're starting to make sense of the world from your perspective. The second thing is, it allows you to avoid future negative behavior. Now I've got a special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the question of the day. I wanna know what was your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week. When you watch a video and you just get motivated, the sign says you have a 35% chance of actually following through. That's not good enough, Believe Nation. We gotta take action. But when you get motivated and then you create a specific plan of action for when and how you're gonna do it, your number jumps from 35% to 91% chance of following through. And when you commit to somebody else, like posting down here in the comments below, that number jumps to 95%. I wanna know your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week. Put it down in the comments below so you can follow through and I can celebrate you.
Most people never hit their goals because they don't structure their life towards actually accomplishing those goals. You can say that you want something. You can say that this is your ambition and your goal, but unless it's in your calendar, unless you start actually working towards it, you're never going to accomplish it. Dreams stay dreams because there is no momentum. Let's talk about how to get it. One of the common questions I get asked when I'm doing my live stream, when I'm doing my, my interviews, when I'm doing my, my tour, my stops, people almost always will ask me, how many hours sleep do you get? When you go to bed, when you get up, how much do you sleep every night? Right now I'm sleeping nine hours a day. I sleep nine hours. I did a sleep study. Uh, I was sleeping around eight and getting, and was still tired when I woke up. And so I went and did an overnight sleep study and he told me, I'm looking for the hack. I'm like, hey, you're, you're deficient in magnesium. So just take these and then you can sleep seven and be normal. He said, no, nothing wrong with you. You just need to sleep nine hours a night. That's healthy for you. It's like, what, that's healthy? Are you kidding me? What are you talking about? Nobody sleeps nine hours a night. He's like, yeah, between six and 10 is actually, that's the normal range. The whole eight hours a night is a myth. So I felt bad and I'm still trying to hack it. So I sleep nine hours a night. I don't wake up to an alarm. And people assume that I am, I'm only sleeping three, four or five hours a night because of how productive I am during the day. This is it, right? You could sleep 12 hours a night and crush it in the other 12 hours. Most people default to thinking they need to wake up an hour early. Say, well, if I wake up at 5 a.m. or at 4 a.m., I'm gonna be more productive. If you are not productive for 16 hours a day, then Adding an extra hour to that's not gonna make you that much more productive. The problem isn't what time you wake up, the problem is what you're doing with the hours that you're awake. And so as much as possible, what I try to do is make every second intentional. I'm not always able to achieve that, especially not every second, but, but I try to make everything intentional. I try to make every, where I'm spending time is intentional. I'm in the present, I'm not thinking about something else. I'm here with you guys making this video right now. All I think about is this video that I'm making for you right now. Where's Nina right now? I don't know. Where's my cell phone? Well, it's right here because I can see it. But where are my keys? I don't know. Where are my dogs? I don't know. What am I doing after this? I have no idea. I'm focused and I'm with you right now. Most people live in the past. Most people are thinking about what could have been. Most people are regretting the decisions that they made and they're procrastinating because they're afraid of doing things because they don't want to do things. All things that prevent you from actually doing. That's the biggest problem. You're a genius. You're the best in the world at something. You can go off and make amazing things. The problem is your time is not being used efficiently. It's not being used effectively either. You haven't structured your life to help you accomplish your goals. Look at your big goals. Look at your big goals. Like what's the next big goal that you have for yourself? You may not have one. If, that's a, that, if you don't have one, then you gotta figure out what your purpose is because that's the greatest thing of all time, right? Get the book, build the serve, you'll figure it out. You'll be, you'll be ignited. But your next big goal now look at your calendar. Are you aligning what's in your calendar, your daily habits towards you accomplishing your goals? And for most people it's, it's no. Or you're, you have it listed, but you're not doing it because you look at it and you get afraid and you procrastinate on it. So trying to cut that down to almost zero, even before making these videos, before making expressive videos, I have a couple minutes of procrastination. Um, I go and make sure I get my water. I go and maybe have a keto bar, just pacing around a little bit because I'm nervous about making the videos because I want them to be the best videos that I've ever made. It's always my intention. But too many people live in hours or days or months of procrastination instead of doing it. You get the results by doing. It's the only way. You will never get the results by just thinking about it. You can be motivated, amazing. You can have the mindset, awesome. That's half the equation. The other half is doing. You have to actually just go out there and do. You need to structure your life to allow you to accomplish your goals. I'm gonna give you a three-step process that will help. Step number one is start with the mission and work backwards. So the mission is lifetime. The mission is lifetime. Not, not what specifically you're gonna be doing, but your purpose comes from your pain. We've talked about that a lot on this channel. I love helping entrepreneurs because I struggled so much as an entrepreneur. Whoever you used to be, where you struggled and felt the most worthless, you will love helping those people for the rest of your life. That will never get old. How you do it will change a lot. Right now I'm doing it through YouTube videos, I'm doing it through books, I'm doing it through my tours, all of that. But, but it's gonna change. In 10 years it'll be different. Maybe YouTube's not around. Maybe people don't have paper books anymore. You know, there's gonna be lots of changes that come. But that mission, that purpose will never change. It will never change. And when you figure out what it is for you, it will never change as well. So start with your mission and then you start working backwards. Step number two is understand that your success is habits. Your success is habits. What you do on a regular basis is what you're going to accomplish. You can eat a chocolate bar and be on a diet and not get fat. 
but if you eat a chocolate bar every day, you're gonna get fat. You're not on a diet anymore. <laughs> Similarly, if you eat salad once a week, it's not enough, right? You are what you consistently do. Your success comes from doing habits. And entrepreneurs are typically great starters, but not great at being consistent. And that's the problem. Working your face off for, for a 48 hour stretch isn't gonna do anything for you. It's every single day working, even if it's only an hour a day. That dream that you have, that business that you wanted to start, that business that you want to take to the next level, it could be there. It could have been there already. It could have been there already. The problem is you've been sitting on that idea for three months, six months, four years without doing enough on it. Little tiny starts, it's not enough. Every day, I'm talking every single day, making progress towards you actually accomplishing that thing. You want that life? You have to do it every day. And step number three is no 10 year goals. Now, what was interesting in this video is Jordan first talks about having a three year goal for yourself. And then he said for himself, he can't plan for more than six months because his life is too chaotic and too much stuff going on. I think that's actually the sign of a healthy life. Like there's no way you know where you're gonna be in three years. There's no way you're gonna know where you're gonna be in 10 years. That's crazy. But three years is crazy too. There's no way I'm, going, I'm about to leave on my tour from January to April, 2020 and I'm gonna come back a different person. In April, I'm gonna be a different person than when I left, when I'm about to leave, coming up now, right? So I don't know what I'm gonna be doing after that. I have no idea. I mean, it's still gonna be within the confines of my mission, right? I'm still gonna be doing work to help entrepreneurs. So maybe I come back and say, I don't wanna do YouTube anymore. That's it, I'm done. Enjoy these last videos and I'm gonna move on and do something else, right? So I don't think you can have an act with through your plan. Don't even try. Don't like this. People get stressed out about having the perfect three year plan. There's no way. Like if you hate your three year plan, you're thinking small. The idea, like think of who you were three years ago, right? Let alone five years ago or 10 years ago. Just take three years ago. Who you were three years ago. Could you accurately predict where you are right now? There's no way. Not if you're growing. Like Jordan said, he starts off saying three year plan and then goes down and says, well, I can only do only six months. I think that should be normal. Like I think six months should be the very end. Six months should be the very upper limit. If you're growing, if you're learning, if you're investing into yourself. But if you are a different person than you were three years ago, what makes you think with any degree of confidence that you're gonna be able to predict your life three years out? There's no way, you can't. So don't worry about it, don't stress about it. Don't, don't sit there and have this plan for the next three years. You're not gonna hit that plan. That's not your goal. Your goal is to move closer to your mission and you have to be flexible enough to take the opportunities as they come. If you wanna learn the three amazing habits that the 1% use every day, check the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. Other than the five second rule, there is one habit that I have adopted in the last three years that has fundamentally changed me as a business person.